Today, we are going to discuss about the third chapter of standard 12 biology, and that is human reproduction. We know that humans are sexually reproducing organisms, and they are really parents. That means they give birth to the child. They do not lay eggs. And the sexual reproduction in humans include various kinds of processes. And that is first one gametogenesis. That is formation of gametes, sperms in male and ova or ovum in female. Then transfer of gamete. That is sperm. That means release of the sperm into female reproductive tract and that is known as insemination. Then the process of fertilization. Then after fertilization, when zygote is prepared, the transfer of zygote to the uterus and implantation. Implantation that means fixing of developing embryo into uterine wall. Fifth, embryogenesis, that is developing of embryo and lastly, parturition. That means delivery, delivery of healthy baby. So these are the steps which are involved in human sexual reproduction. We know that the humans are unisexual, that means male and female are different. And during puberty, we will be able to observe different kinds of characteristic changes, characteristic changes in humans. But note that Sperm production takes place in older men also, but in females, the production of ova stops around the age of 50. This is the difference. Now, today we are going to discuss about male reproductive system. Here the diagram is given and this is the longitudinal section of testes. Male reproductive system is made up of reproductive organs, then reproductive ducts or say accessory ducts, reproductive glands. The main reproductive organs in males is nothing but a pair of testes. The male reproductive system is located in the pelvic region, that means over here it is located, whole system is located here. And the main reproductive organs in males are nothing but a pair of testes. The every testes is nothing but an oval shaped structure which is reddish in color, brownish in color and the length will be four 
to 5 cm and the width will be 2 to 3 cm. The testes, they are not located in the abdominal cavity, but the testes are located in a sac like structure which is located outside the abdominal cavity. And this sac like structure is known as scrotum. The temperature of scrotum is 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade lesser than the temperature of the body. And so that this temperature is suitable for the process of spermatogenesis, that means production of sperms. So testes, they are located in scrotum. Every testis is protected by a protective covering known as tunica alluginia. Tunica alluginia is nothing but the protective covering which occurs outside the testis. Now, this tunica alluginia descends in the testis. And it divides, it makes parts of the testes. Such 250 partitions are observed in the testes. 250 partitions. Every partition is known as testicular lobules. Every partition is known as testicular lobules and in each testicular lobule there occurs one to three highly coiled ducts and those ducts are known as seminiferous tubules. The inner side of the seminiferous tubules contain two different kinds of cells. Germ cells or other cells, parametrophonia and sertoli cells. The germ cells, they are arranged in four to eight layers and they are responsible to give rise or differentiate into mature sperms by the process of meiosis. Whereas Sertoli cells, they provide nutrition to the developing germ cells. Between the seminiferous tubules, you will be able to observe some certain masses of cells. And these masses of cells are known as interstitial cells or Leydig cells. The masses of cells which occur within the testis between the seminiferous tubules or the testicular lobules or the partitions is known as interstitial cells or Leydig cells. These cells synthesize, they produce and secrete many reproductive hormones known as androgens. Some immunity providing cells or immune competent cells, they are also present over here. So this was all about the pair of testes, the main reproductive organs of male. Over and above, this pair of 
of testes some accessory ducts are also present in male reproductive system the accessory ducts contain rated testes vasa afferentia epididymis and vas deferens the seminiferous tubules they produce sperm cells and sperm cells from all the seminiferous tubules they are transported to vasa afferentia through rated testes if you can concentrate in the diagram you will be able to observe some structure reticular structure needle like structure which occurs on the periphery on the inner side of the testis and that is known as rated testis rated testis is responsible for the transportation of sperm from seminiferous tubules to vasa afferentia vasa afferentia they are also small hair like thin ducts and they transport the sperm to epididymis epididymis is a long highly coiled structure highly coiled duct and that is attached to the outermost surface of the testis very closely it is highly coiled highly convoluted structure can you imagine why it is so the highly coiled nature of epididymis is because of when the sperm pass through epididymis proper time of maturation of sperm can be achieved so it provides time to sperm for the development and maturation now these epididymis at its distal end enters into again a new duct which is called vas deferens vas deferens starts from the scrotum enters into abdominal tract through uh, an opening the opening which joins the abdominal cavity to the scrotum and this opening is known as inguinal canal So inguinal canal is the region from where the vas deferens enters into abdominal cavity from scrotum. It forms a loop. The vas deferens forms a loop around the urinary bladder. The distal end of the vas deferens is bulging, is swollen, in which the seminal vesicle opens so in this the end of vas deferens seminal vesicle becomes open and now they unite to form an ejaculatory duct this is urinary bladder this is ejaculatory duct from urinary bladder urethra comes out and urethra joins with ejaculatory duct and now they unite to form urino genital tract or you can say it's urethra urethra genital tract or urethra urethra passes through the penis and opens at the tip of the penis through an opening known as urethral meatus 
So this was the description of male reproductive system in humans. Now we are going to talk about penis. Penis is nothing but it is external genitalia of human. Penis is a cylindrical organ. And it is located in front of the scrotum. The penis is responsible for the process of insemination. That means release of sperms into female reproductive tract. It contains a specialized tissue known as erectile tissue. So it is responsible for the process of erection. And erection is required for insemination. The penis is bulging at its distal end. That means the proximal part or the end part of penis is bulging. And that is known as glans penis. And glans penis is covered by a loose covering of skin known as foreskin. Now, what is left? Left is nothing but accessory reproductive glands. There are three types of glands which occur in male reproductive system. A prostate gland, pair of seminal vesicle, a pair of bulbo urethral gland. See, on the below side, you will observe a prostate gland below side of urinary bladder. On behind of the urinary bladder, you will observe seminal vesicle. And here, on the sides of the urethra, you will observe bulbo-urethral glands. These are the glands which secretions. The secretions of the glands is responsible for the formation of seminal plasma. And seminal plasma along with sperms form semen. The seminal plasma which is produced and secreted by prostate gland, a pair of seminal vesicle and pair of arboreal gland is rich in various constituents like fructose, like calcium, like various enzymes, like vitamin C. So seminal plasma nourishes the sperms. It increases the richness of the sperms. It increases the fertility or fertilizing capacity of the sperms. And lately, lastly, do not forget that the secretion of bulbo-urethral gland is responsible for the lubrication of penis. So this was everything about male reproductive system. Lesson number three, human reproduction, biology, English medium standard 12th.